Vishwamitra belonged to a dynasty of kings. He was also known as Vishwaratha. He had several wives and nine sons. He reigned for a long time. One day, he set out with his army on an expedition. On his way, he came across a forest region. He was wonderstruck by what he saw. What a sight! I just cannot believe my eyes. Minister, are you also wonderstruck with this wonderful sight? Tigers and cows, lions and deer, moving together as if they were all great friends. Oh, how strange and wonderful. Vishwamitra moved on. The entire region was an abode of peace and beauty. Happiness appeared to reign there. He found a hermitage at a little distance. It was the hermitage of the great sage Vashishta. It was due to his powerful spell that wild animals had given up their enmity and were living like friends. Minister, who was living in that hermitage? This hermitage belongs to the great sage Vashishta. I would like to visit the sage. Let's go. Sage Vashishta welcomed King Vishwamitra with respect and warmth. Oh, welcome King. Please take your seat. The sage inquired about the welfare of the king and then offered tasty fruits. During the course of conversation, the sage came to know the king had brought a large army along with him. O oh, king, please be my guest today along with your followers and army. How can a sage living in a forest feed a large army? How will he find food for so many men and fodder for so many animals? It is hard even for a king who resides in a palace. How then can a poor sage manage it? Oh, thank you for your hospitality. But I would like to leave now. But sage Vashishta pressed him again and again. At last, King Vishwamitra agreed to be his guest. In his hermitage, Vashishta had a cow named Nandini. Nandini was the daughter of Kamadenu, the heavenly cow. Vashishta approached Nandini and prayed. O oh mother, King Vishwamitra has come to our hermitage. It is our duty to feed and satisfy him and his followers. Please arrange for it. In minutes, Nandini produced all the articles of food required, plenty of rice and eatables, baskets full of various fruits and streams of milk and honey. Thank you, mother. Now Vashishta went to the king. O oh king, you and your army can have the dinner. Everyone had an excellent dinner. King Vishwamitra observed all this. He was wonderstruck. It is a wonder of wonders. How could a poor hermit, residing in a forest, entertain so many people to a sumptuous meal of such high standards? Vishwamitra turned to Vashishta. I would like to know, how did you manage to arrange such a lovely spread in such a short notice? I have a sacred cow called Nandini and it was a boon granted by her. Vishwamitra was dumbfounded and he took a few seconds before speaking. Being a king, I should have such a cow. Make a gift of this cow Nandini to me. In return, I will give you one lakh cows, jewels, 14,000 sturdy elephants and 800 gem-studded chariots and many other valuables. O oh, great king, this cow Nandini has been gifted to me by Kamadenu, her mother, so that my daily sacrifices, rites, rituals and penance are performed 
as well as to entertain my guests in a befitting manner. This is the only riches I possess. How can I part with it? Vishwamitra was unhappy with this reply. Why do you, a sage, residing in a forest, require such a cow? I am a king. Such rare and worthy things rightly belong to a king. Nandini should be mine. O oh king, I have no power to gift her. Now, Vishwamitra's anger knew no bounds. Immediately he called his soldiers and ordered them. Bind the cow and drag her away. The soldiers bound Nandini with a strong rope and pulled her. She was in pain. She jumped, shook off the soldiers and ran like wind to Vashishta. Oh, save me! Oh, save me! She begged him to protect her. Mother, before the power of a mighty king, what can a poor sage like me do to defend you? Then permit me to protect myself. Yes, there is nothing wrong in it. At once, Nandani roared, Hum -ba! Out of each hair on her body, thousands of armed men were born and jumped out, and a huge war broke out. On seeing this, Vishwamitra sent his sons towards Vashishta, but were engulfed by the fire created by Vashishta. Vishwamitra was grief-stricken. Due to the power of Vashishta's penance, I lost my army and my sons. Our entire valor was useless. Therefore, I will also perform penance like Vashishta and acquire such a power. Then and there he took the decision and left the hermitage of Vashishta. Vishwamitra went to the Himalayas and selected a peaceful place for performing penance. He started his penance to obtain the favor of Shiva, the Lord of Kailash. Days rolled on, months went by, years passed on. But Shiva did not show himself. Vishwamitra's penance became harder and harder. Thousands of years rolled on. At last, Shiva was pleased with his penance and presented himself. O oh Vishwamitra, I am very much pleased by your penance. Ask for whatever boon you desire. Vishwamitra was jubilant. Lord, Grant me all the secret knowledge of archery. Grant me the secret of all the magical arrows that Yakshas, Rakshashas, Gandharvas and Maharishis have. As you wish, my son. Now, Vishwamitra was highly pleased with his own power. Vashishta, you destroyed my army and my sons. Now I will teach you the goodness. Uttering these words, he rushed to Vashishta's hermitage. At that moment, Vashishta was immersed in prayer. Other sages were sitting around him, performing rites and chanting mantras. Enraged beyond limits, Vishwamitra rushed against Vashishta with utmost confidence in his own victory. Now you will see my strength and power. He launched many an arrow from his bow. Other sages saw this sudden danger and ran helter-skelter shrieking loudly. Vashishta's prayer was disturbed by all this noise. He opened his eyes. Before him stood King Vishwamitra with a deadly weapon ready to strike. 
Other sages and young disciples were running about in great fear. Some were wounded. Do not run. Cast away your fear. Do not be frightened. I am here. I will help you. He took out the yoga danda on which he had been resting his arm and planted it in front. Vishwamitra went on shooting arrows and throwing weapons. But to his utter despair, every arrow and each weapon would come up to the yoga danda and would be swallowed by it. It's a miracle. What am I going to do? All the magical arrows and weapons I have obtained as a result of my penance for years have become useless before the power of the sage. He sat there with his head hung in great shame. In the meanwhile, all the inmates of the hermitage returned and praised Vashishta for his skill. In his utter desperation, Vishwamitra sighed and said, Power of arms is useless. I will become a Brahmarishi. Then it will be easy to take revenge against Vashishta. But this defeat did not discourage Vishwamitra. He did not change his decision to defeat Vashishta. He decided to perform penance once more to increase his powers. He went southwards. There, he settled down in a forest and started his penance to please Brahma, the Creator. Vishwamitra continued his penance. Hundreds of years passed, but Brahma did not appear before him. Vishwamitra did not give up his penance. After a thousand years, Brahma was pleased with his unshakable determination and appeared before him and said, O oh King Vishwamitra, you have now become a Rajanishi. I am blessed, but my vow is to become a Brahma Rishi. I must become a Brahma Rishi. I will continue my penance till I reach my goal. Saying this, he again continued his penance. At this time, a new development took place. Trishanku was a king of the Ishwaku dynasty. He desired to purify himself of his sins and go to heaven in his earthly body itself. Vashishta was his family guru. So he went to Vashishta. Bless me, respected guru. Welcome, my dear king. Tell me the purpose of your visit. Guru, I would like to go to heaven in this earthly body. You have to guide me to do the sacrificial ritual. Vashishta, who heard this, was shocked. Trishanku, no one can attain heaven in this earthly body and moreover, I will not guide you to do the sacrificial ritual. It's an impossible goal. Prashanku felt very sad but could not get rid of his desire. He left Vashishtha's hermitage and set out in a southerly direction. There, in a forest, a hundred sons of Vashishtha had settled down for penance. Ah, I hope these sages might help me in fulfilling my desire. He went to them and requested them to help him. Vashishta's sons laughed at him and said, What our father has refused cannot be granted by us also. Trishanku was angered by their laughter. If you and your father refuse to help me out, I will find someone to do it. I will get help from someone else and perform the necessary sacrificial rite. How dare you talk against your guru? Because you have trained a traitor to your guru, you shall become a chandala. Immediately, King Trishanku lost his color and beauty. He became black. His hair became rough and he indeed became a Chandala. Still, 
his courage did not desert him. He moved further south and found Vishwamitra performing penance. Though Trishanku had become ugly, Vishwamitra addressed him with sympathy and kindness. O oh, king, how did this happen to you? Trishanku explained his plight in detail. Sage, I have never uttered falsehood. I have ruled over the people according to dharma. But now, there is none to protect me. Is there no way we can please God by human effort? If it pleases you, help me and see that I attain heaven in this human body itself. Trishanka, do not worry yourself. I will guide your sacrificial right. Under the leadership of Vishwamitra, the sacrificial rites began in right earnest. Trishanku, as per the instructions of Vishwamitra, offered the important portion to all the gods. But none of the gods came to receive his portion. This enraged Vishwamitra further. He called Trishanku and said, Trishanku, do not be afraid by all this. Now I will send you to heaven in your earthly body by the power of my hands. Vishwamitra made Trishanku rise from the earth and dispatched him to heaven. Trishanku, in his earthly body, rose higher and higher and reached the world of the gods. Seeing Trishanku approaching heaven, Indra, the lord of the heavens, became angry. He shouted out, Trishanku, you senseless one, you have no place in our world as you have been polluted by the curse of your guru. Trishanku turned upside down and began falling down to the earth. He was filled with great fear. In his agony, he shouted out, Oh great sage, oh Vishwamitra, I am ruined. Save me! Save me! Hearing this, Vishwamitra rose to the occasion and ordered, O oh, Trishanku, do not fear. Stop there! He made Trishanku stand there in mid-heavens by the sheer power of his penance. To finalize the act he had undertaken, Vishwamitra created a new Saptarshi constellation and many other solar constellations in the southern sky. I shall now create another Indra. Oh, I will see to it that the heavens do not have an Indra. Hearing this, the gods and sages shuddered in fear. They came and told Vishwamitra, Oh, great sage, Trishinku bears the curse of his guru. He cannot have a place in heaven. But my vow and word cannot become false. Let those solar constellations created by me be permanent. Amidst them let Trishanku be there in his earthly body. The gods agreed to it. Vishwamitra was immensely pleased. He had won his battle against Indra and the gods. But to his dismay, he realized that all the power he had gained by his long and hard penance had been spent due to his anger. So, he went westwards to the holy place called Pushkara to perform penance again. Vishwamitra started his penance all over again. At this time, Ambarisha was the king of Ayodhya. He had decided to perform a sacrificial rite. But the gods stole away his sacrificial animal. He was going through a forest in search of the sacrificial animal as suggested by his guru. On the way, he came across sage Ruchika's hermitage. He explained his situation to him. 
Oh Sage, please help me. I am a poor sage. How can I help you? Anyway, the sage thought for a while and came to a conclusion. I have three sons. I will give one of my sons as a sacrificial animal. Take this boy and in turn send me one lakh cows. The young boy set out with King Ambarisha to become the sacrificial animal. On their way, they came to Pushkara. Vishwamitra, who was performing penance, was his maternal uncle. Now seeing his uncle, the boy hoped that his life might be saved after all. He ran to his uncle, seated himself on his lap. Vishwamitra, who was in penance, slowly opened his eyes. Who is this sitting on my lap? Uncle, please help me. Even though I have my father and mother, it is as good as not having them. You are the protector of all. Please save me. My life must be saved, but the king's sacrificial right should not be ruined. Seeing his nephew, a mere child, in tears, Vishwamitra took great pity on him. O oh son, do not fear. I will help you. I will teach you some special mantras which will save one from all difficulties. Listen, when you are tied to the sacrificial altar, chant these mantras with devotion. Your life will be saved. The boy took leave after getting his blessings. In the sacrificial ground, the king started the rites and the boy was tied to the sacrificial altar. The moment he was tied, he began chanting the mantras his uncle had taught him. Hearing these mantras being chanted with pure devotion, Indra and the gods were highly pleased. They blessed the boy and saved his life. Meanwhile, after the boy left, Vishwamitra continued his rigorous penance for a thousand years. Brahma appeared before him and said, Vishwamitra, you have become Rishi. But this did not satisfy Vishwamitra. His goal was to become a Brahma Rishi, so he continued his penance. During this time, Vishwamitra met a beautiful woman by name Menaka. Vishwamitra lived with her happily for ten years. They had a daughter named Shakuntala. One day, Vishwamitra began thinking, why did I give up my penance? What a blunder I have made. He felt sorry. He then left Menaka and went northwards. He started his penance again. After a thousand years, Brahma appeared again and said, Vishwamitra, now you have become a Maharshi. Oh Lord, I am happy. But my goal is to become a Brahma Rishi. I should attain the status of Brahma Rishi. He continued his penance. At last, Brahma, accompanied by all the gods, appeared and said, Vishwamitra, you have become a Brahma Rishi. My desire is to be called a Brahma Rishi by Vashishta, who is learned in all the Vedas. Then the gods requested Vashishta to fulfill the desire of Vishwamitra. Vashishta came and said, Vishwamitra, you are indeed a Brahma Rishi. Thus Vishwamitra reached his goal by his tenacious efforts and concluded his penance. He was honored by the gods and sages alike. In the Ramayana, the role of Vishwamitra is great. King Dasharatha of Ishkwaku dynasty had four sons, Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata and Shatrughana. His guru was Vashishta. One day, Vishwamitra came to the place of Dasharatha. The king welcomed him 
with great respect and offered a high seat. We are blessed to have a great sage, Vishwamitra, as our guest. May I know what brought you to this place? Kindly let me know and I will fulfill your need. Vishwamitra explained the purpose of his visit. O oh, great king, two demons, Maricha and Subahu, are obstructing my sacrificial rites. They are very wicked but extremely brave. I can curse them and get rid of the menace, but according to the vow of the right, I should not become angry. Send your son Brahma, who is wise and brave, along with me. Let him kill the Rakshashas. In return, I will teach Rama things that would make him famous in all the three worlds. Hearing this, Dasharatha became worried. How can Rama, still a young boy, fight the mighty Rakshasas? Great sage, I shall accompany you with my army. I shall remove their menace. Vishwamitra in a most reassuring tone said, I have no doubt about the valor of Rama. Still, Dasharatha felt uneasy. Having agreed to fulfill my request, you are now backing out. Vashishta, the guru of the king, advised Dasharatha. Vishwamitra is the bravest among the brave and the wisest among the wise. He is a master of all arms and weapons. In fact, there is none else in the world that knows the art of archery and warfare better than him. He alone can kill all the Rakshasas. When he is with Rama, what danger can be there for him? This is a good opportunity. Send Rama and Vishwamitra. At last, Dasharatha agreed. Rama, accompanied by Lakshmana, went with Vishwamitra. Afterwards, they came to a forest. Early the next morning, Vishwamitra woke Rama. My son, get ready. I will start your lessons today. He taught Rama the secrets of magical arrows, which could defeat all the gods and demons. He also taught the methods of withdrawing them. Vishwamitra made all the preparations for the sacrificial rite. The rites began and continued for five days without hindrance. On the sixth day, there started a deafening roar in the sky. Maricha and Subahu came with their followers in its wake. They began pouring blood into the sacred fire. Rama! Hmm. Rama killed Subahu and Maricha ran away. The rites ended peacefully. All the sages were happy. I'm happy, my dear son Rama. You have done what I expected out of you. I bless you that you will become a great king and your name will be evergreen and remembered forever. <laughs>